turn to page 271, first and last, standing on the promises as we stand. Step up here, if you will, and we'll have prayer together. And while Brother Wallace is coming to the pulpit, I want to uh, announce that uh, in the parking lot a little while ago, I had prayer with Brother Good and Miss Good. Well, Miss Good's not here, but Brother Good, and he's got to go back at 8 a.m. in the morning. And uh, they found some something or another uh, with a CAT scan about the pancreatic cancer. So he's greatly concerned. She's greatly concerned. You know, it, it, he was cancer-free for almost two years, and they're thinking, now don't quote me exactly, please, this is what he told me, thinking that it may have came back. So he'll know more tomorrow morning. So we wanna pray for Brother Good, all right? He's in your class, right? Yes, he's in his class. That's why I got the teacher up here. Let's ask God, all of us, let's ask God to have his way in Brother Good's life, and then we'll make some more announcements in a little bit. Right, Brother Good, I mean, Brother Wallace, go pray for us. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we give you honor and glory and praise that you let us be here this Amen. morning to worship you. God, we thank you, Lord. We take it not lightly, Lord, that you bless us enough to give us good health to come into the house of God. Lord, we pray for Brother Dennis. God, you help him, yeah. encourage him, strengthen him. God, I pray that you'll move upon his life. Lord, if it be your will, God, you'll restore him to good health. Help us help Joe. God, I pray that you'll help her. Lord, we yeah. pray for John White there in the hospital. Lord, you'll help him, recover him. Lord, we pray for Harvey Kelly. God, you'll take care of him through his yeah. surgery of his yeah. cancer. God bless them now, Lord. We thank you for the good day you give us to live, Amen. to honor yeah. you, Lord, Amen. just to praise you for it. Yeah. Lord, we give, thank, thank you today, you. Lord, you bless your service. Help preacher Amen. Griffith. God, I pray you anoint him, fill him full of the Holy Spirit. Lord, may the Holy Spirit work here in our hearts and right. our lives. Yeah. God, that souls will be touched, that souls will be saved. Yeah. Lord, that there be a healing upon us. Lord, bless this now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All Fine right. Thank you. you. May be seated all over the building. We welcome each and every one of you, and we're delighted you're here. We have visitors here, and we appreciate our visitors being in the house of the Lord this morning. I particularly like to uh, recognize Miss Kenan right here. If you'll stand, I don't know where is Nathan in the choir behind me. There's Kenan with the new baby, and of course that's Mom with that's Suley's baby. Isn't that right? So uh, that's great. They snatched yours and got theirs up here. Let's give Kenan a great big round of applause. All right, everybody. God bless your heart. Glad you're here. Glad the baby's able to be here, okay? Now, in the bulletin, you'll look at uh, the announcements, everybody, and especially Fall Festival. That's the 29th. And then there's a 24th Sunday night after church. We'll have finger foods and all that for Pastor Appreciation Month. But that's, that's, uh, that's in, in a couple weeks or so. Let's look at the bulletin. All the announcements are there, and you need every one of them, all right? Let's have the ushers come on down. We'll get the regular tithe and the regular offering. Always remember we have men stationed back here as well and on the side door. So when you look around, you notice some of these guys are missing. They're out front. They're on the side. They're in the back keeping us safe, and we appreciate them doing that. And I did notice, I did notice, I don't know why, but I know they had Miss Jenna Dover put in the bulletin. Please be sure to keep your car doors locked. So uh, apparently the guys are seeing something out there, maybe people pulling through, or hopefully, hopefully not checking vehicles yet. And if, if, they, if they're checking vehicles, our guys have, the, have my permission to accost them, amen, and stop all that. 
I mean, just stop that immediately. But I would lock your vehicles every service, all right? God bless you. The choir is going to sing. You worship in your giving, all right? All right number 19, that's the cross. And that's the the volleyball game this week. It's October the 11th Number at 530, six. all right? 530, and I noticed Brother Herpel up in the balcony. I believe he was in the balcony the other week as well. Both those little ones, we got their names in the bulletin here. Both the little girls have not been well. And Addie Hale, I, I think I saw Miss Hale, but not Addie. So we pray for these little children, all right? And then Ken Robbins and just several more in the bulletin, okay? Brother Jared, step up here and pray for us. Dedicate the offering, if you will, please, sir. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us and saving us, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be back in your house today. I pray, dear Lord, you'd bless these tithes and offerings. I pray that you'd help our pastor today as he preaches, dear Lord. I pray that you'd help the singers, everybody that touches this service today, dear Lord. I pray that you'd help them to lift up, honor, and glorify your name, I pray, dear Lord. We thank you for everything done for us. I pray that you'd just bless these tithes and offerings again, dear Lord, and give us a good day. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, choir's going to sing. The, the volleyball game is not a home game. I'm sorry. So uh, there are no more home games, what they're telling me. So uh, you can go, still go and travel with the team. All right, come on, Mr. Williams. All right, number six and four, bless the Lord. Jesus is to me my everything, and I bless the day he came. When he gave me drink from the fountain sweet, and I'll never thirst again. Now through the Spirit of the Son to the Father I can say, For your saving blood and for all you've done, well, bless your holy name.
someday I'll move beyond the blue where a better home awaits. There to lay aside for a crown of life all the sorrow, death, and pain. To see my loved ones and to know I have left this world behind. I will lift my hands and I'll praise his name while I'm shouting through the sky. Oh, Someday I'll move beyond the blue where a better home awaits. There to lay aside for a crown of life, all the sorrow, death, and pain. To see my loved ones and to know I've left this world behind. I will lift my hands and I'll praise His name while I'm shouting through the sky.
much. Singers are getting in place. Y'all go ahead and get ready. Whatever group wants to go first, and uh, I'm not sure we got one or two, but anyway, they're getting in place, and we appreciate it. Uh, if you'll notice the bulletin, also, Mr. Owen Cannon, that's Michelle Menez's son. He was in a terrible wreck. I think it was one of Brother Herpel's uh, work trucks, and I'm thankful the Lord protected him and took care of him. And uh, so you pray for Owen. And then, um, uh, uh, let's see here, I got one other down here. Well, that one, and then um, uh, Miss M Michelle Menez's mother, but she got a good report, so that's great. So just pray one for another. These folks that are not well will soon recuperate, okay? Y'all ready? All right, this is Brother Owens and his boys. You worship with them while they sing. A thief on the cross Beside of Jesus Hell bound and nowhere to go He believed in his heart Jesus the Savior A rescue's made He never felt those flames The Savior was the only way, and love is the reason he never felt those flames. He's with God today, a rescue was made. Save me out of those flames. Rescues me from hell one day. Jesus, the Savior, was the only way. And love is the reason I'll never feel those flames. I thank God for that day a rescue was made. I thank God for that day my rescue was made. We got her on the red mic. This is, this is. Uh, we always say Andrew and Mary Beth, but this is Mary Beth. All right. <laughs> Faced with their greatest trial of all The king said give them one last chance Surely their faith will fall But they would not bow and they would not bend All they said was we will stand For the God we serve is able to Deliver from your hand But
request. But if not, what we'll trust is way is best. Lord, I know that I have prayed this prayer so many times before, but here I am before you pleading my case once more. Lord, you know how important this one thing is to me. And I believe you're able to give me what I need. But if not, I'm still gonna love with all my might. I'm still Amen to that. Thank you very much. I, I guess I knew it, but I didn't quite realize it that you played the piano as well. Thank you. Very good job. God bless you. And so uh, if Andrew ever puts the guitar down, we'll just keep her on the piano playing and singing. Amen. Hope he does not anyway. Take your Bibles, everybody, and go to Galatians chapter number one. Please, if you have a copy of God's Word today, Galatians chapter number one, give me what you can if you will. And I uh, really covered your prayers this morning, all of you. I covered your prayers. We're going to uh, present a theme from God's Word that I think is very, very uh, appropriate for, of course, the church setting, but also, Brother Josh, uh, the world that we're living in. And uh, really what I want to deal with today is, um, is you can have a ton of religion but not an ounce of salvation. You can have an absolute ton of religion, but not one ounce of salvation. That's a tough place to be, sad place to be. Galatians chapter 1 is the Apostle Paul writing to the Galatian church. We'll start reading in verse number 10. For, I, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify, that word means to make known to, for them to understand. I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. 
but by the revelation of Jesus Christ, God gave him the gospel. Now, what, pay, pay, pay particular attention right here. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. That's Judaism, all right? That, that is the religion of the entirety of the Old Testament. Uh, religion has been here since way, all the way back to Abraham. The religion of the Jews. But look what Paul did. How that beyond measure, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. That word means to ravage, to destroy, to overthrow the church. Now look this way, all right? He, he's religious. He's very religious, but yet he's trying to destroy the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Does that not sound familiar? Hey, look up here. We got the same thing going on in our world. Same thing. You, you, can't, you can't wrap your mind. Or right, we have hesitancy wrapping our mind around the fact that a person can be devoutly religious, yep. devoutly religious, and yet on the same breath persecute the church of God. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Apostle Paul. That's what he was doing. Look at verse number uh, 14. He said, and profited. That word is not a financial word. It means to grow, to mature, to develop. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, I'm glad he called me and you, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, Drop down, if you will, and look at verse number 22. And was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. And listen to this. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. Could I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that this wonderful individual was a persecutor. But Brother Randy, because of God's amazing grace, he became a preacher. He became an evangelist. He became the missionary that spread the gospel all around the world. You know, in this passage of Scripture, in verses 13 through 14, we have what happened to Paul before his conversion. In verses 15 and 16, we have what happened at his conversion. And then in verse 16 through verse 24, we have what happened to him after his conversion. But if you will, look in verse 13 and 14. This is pre-conversion day. Before his conversion, he persecuted the church. Before his conversion, he was enthusiastic and zealous for the tradition of his fathers. That's found in verse 13 and verse 14. And I think that sometimes many of us have failed to realize the depths of his persecution and the depths of the degree that Paul went to to destroy the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so for just a moment today, I want us to think about him being religious and Brother Brian, him being devout in Judaism and zealous of the tradition of the fathers. But I'm going to read to you some verses that really describe the zeal and the determination and the desire of Paul towards the Lord Jesus and towards his church. Take your Bibles, everybody, and go to Acts chapter 8. You need to follow with me, okay? I encourage you to do that right now. I need to show you these verses. Acts chapter number 8, if you will, go there quickly and just follow with me, all right? 
Acts chapter number 8. Look, if you will, in verse number 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. That's talking about Stephen. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, and except the apostles and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Watch this now. As for Saul, he made havoc. He made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing. That word means to drag them, to drag them to their death. Hailing men and women committed them to prison. When we're talking about persecution, we're not talking about lying on the church. We're not talking about criticizing the church. And we're not talking about uh, uh, spreading, spreading uh, falsehood about the church. We're talking about literal, uh, physical persecution, Brother David, where he went from house to house. What was he looking for? He was looking for believers. And when he found a believer, the Bible said, he hailed them. He drug them off into prison. Look at chapter 9 right in front of you. Acts chapter 9 and verse number 1. Everybody stay right there, okay? Acts chapter 9 and verse number 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter, and that's a strong word right there, against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he had no respect to person, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Take your Bible, if you will, and go to Acts chapter number 26. Look what Paul the persecutor. Go to Acts chapter number 26, please, as I try to hurry through this introduction, all right? Acts chapter number 26. I'd like for you to look down in verse number 8. Acts 26, 8. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Watch this. Verily I thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. Watch this now. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, in other words, if they wound up in prison, Brother David, stay, they no doubt were going to be martyrs for the cause of Christ. He said when they, when they, when they, when they, when they were put into death, I gave my voice against them. Watch this. And I punished them oft in every, in other words, every Jewish synagogue. And compel, I, I never thought about this right here. Look at that next phrase. And compel them to blaspheme. In other words, uh, uh, recant, recant. Uh, say something negative about Jesus of Nazareth. Say something negative. Uh, uh, recant your faith. Uh, rescind your faith. Brother Justin Bloom, can you imagine? Now listen to me, okay? Can you imagine? the ferociousness, and can you imagine the, 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 the anger and the hostility and all of the persecution? Look what it said in verse number 11. He said, I compel them to blaspheme. I'm being exceedingly mad against them. Look at it. I persecuted them even on the strange city. Folks, listen. Here's my point today. He was devoutly religious. He was a Jew that sat at the feet of Gamaliel. He was a Jew that outstripped all others in his learning and being zealous for the traditions of the fathers. And he thought within himself that it was the right thing to do to try to stamp out Christianity. Could I, got, could I tell you something? Paul tried it. Nero tried it. Everybody else has tried it. If it, it won't surprise me if Biden doesn't try it. But guess what? Uh, you're not going to stamp out Christianity. You're not going to do away with Christianity. Why? 
because we serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. I'm simply trying to tell you that he was very, very religious, that he was dedicated, that he was, that he was uh, loyal, and that he, uh, he had affinity, and he had his affection, and he had, had given his life, Miss Sheila, he had given his life to Judaism as a proponent of Judaism. And so therefore, Brother Kevin, he viewed Christianity as a rival. He viewed Christianity as a threat. And so he took it upon himself, Brother Lovey, that he had to stamp out Christianity, that he had to destroy it. Well, I'm glad at midday, as he went down the road to Damascus with letters in his hand uh, to, to get more Christians, uh, to take them to prison on uh, a certain day, I'm glad a light brighter than the noonday sun uh, knocked him off his beast. And you know what? They, you know what the Lord said? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And listen, when you're persecuting God's church, and you're persecuting the Lord, amen, because he's the head and we're the body. I'm glad he loves the body, amen. Why are you persecuting the church? He said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee but a kick against the prick. That prick there is an ox goad, the ox goad of an awakened conscience. You say, when did he get his conscience awakened? I'll tell you when, when they put their coast at the feet of a young man by the name of Saul, and he saw Stephen die with the glory of God on him, and he saw Stephen look up, uh, up into heaven. I believe, Brother Randy, I believe Holy Ghost conviction. Uh, smote his heart and he was going down the road to Damascus and God told him oh, you can't kick against those pricks all of your life and he said Lord what wilt thou have me to do that's the day Saul was converted and became Paul that's the day the persecutor thank God became the preacher that's the day the hater of Christianity uh, became the lover of Christianity that's the day the hater of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus became the altogether lovely one uh, to Paul's life. I want to say to you today that he had a whole lot of religion. I said he had a whole lot of religion, but he was lost, amen. He was in sin. And listen, it doesn't matter how dedicated he was to his religion, he was still unsaved, amen. He was still unsaved. Now, go back to Galatians chapter 1, if you will. Go back to Galatians 1, please, everybody, and underline in verse number 13, yes, verse number 13, you've heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. The word conversation is my lifestyle, my conduct. Underline in verse 14, I profited, I went forward, I made progress, and my, what progress he made in the Jews' religion. Now, could I tell you something that you don't know? Well, sorry, maybe you do know. Maybe you do know. But listen, that are two references right there, Brother David, to the term religion. The two of them, Brother Nathan, are found here in Galatians chapter 1. Now, folks, listen. Did you know that the term religion and religious are only found a total of seven times throughout the entirety of the Word of God. Christianity and religion are not identical. I said Christianity and religion are not identical. Nowhere in the Bible is the term religion or religious synonymous with salvation or spirituality. Christianity and religion are way and very far from being the same thing. I said they're very far up from being the same thing. I want to say to you today, I'm so glad, thank God, I do not have religion. Amen. 
I want to say that again. I am so glad, Miss Juanita Newsom, that I do not have religion. I am not just religious. I said I am not just religious, although I'll get to that in a little bit. I do not have religion, Brother Randy. Thank God this is what y'all waiting for. I have a relationship. I have a relationship. And I want you to know that although Paul had religion and he was fervent towards his religion and zealous towards his religion, he did not have a relationship until he met the king of glory on the Damascus road. But when he met the king of glory on the Damascus road, thank God, hey, 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 thank God he put down his religion. I said he put down his religion and God gave him a relationship. Somebody needs to listen. I know that. I know I'm supposed to preach this. I know I am. Somebody needs to listen. You either have religion today. You either have religion or you're religious or you truly do have a relationship. And that relationship is with none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen to this. And some of you may think differently than what I'm about to say, but this is why I'm going to say it. Your religion may not drive you to the depths of hating Christianity that it drove Paul to. And I'm just going to say something else, all right? And it don't matter if it's on YouTube. The religion of Islam, hey, friend, they're the enemy of Christianity. They're the enemy of Christianity. They can't stand Christianity. Now, you tell me how somebody's saved. You tell me how somebody's going to God's heaven when they hate Christianity and they hate Christians and they put them to death and they persecute them and they cut their throat or they cut their head off. I'm talking about Islam. I'm talking about Muslim. I'm talking about, I'm talking about ISIS. I'm talking about even, even if it's Roman Catholic, if they persecute the church of God and try to destroy the church of God, there's absolutely no way that they line up with this Bible. Amen. Now, I'm not saying all Muslims do that. That's not what I'm preaching either. But there's a branch of that crowd. There's a branch of that crowd. Everybody okay? There's a branch of that crowd who views Christianity. They call us an infidel. They call us. And by the way, I'm not an infidel. I'm a believer. I want to ask you today a question. I want to ask everybody in this building a question. When you examine yourself, when you put the microscope, when, no, excuse me, when you put the magnifying glass or the telescope of God's Word and look through at your life, do you find religion and religious or do you find a relationship? What do you mean a relationship? Well, friend, he's real, amen? He's real to me, and I know he's real to you. Hey, friend, he talks to me. Say amen. I don't mean audibly, but in my heart, Brother Justin, Kristen Blue, he talks to me. I'm telling you, he convicts me. He guides me. He comforts me. He encourages me. He edifies me. He shows me when I'm wrong. He convicts me of my sin. But not only, Brother Randy, does he talk to me. I'm so glad, thank God, I can talk to him. I mean, I can talk to him. I'm talking to you about a relationship. I'm talking to you something that goes more than a mental ascent and more than a mental knowledge. It's something in your heart. I said it's something in your heart. Jesus is more than a historical figure. But Jesus is more than somebody that died on the cross and to come up out of the grave. Thank God he's the living Lord. He's a living Savior. Hey, we say it often. He's the dearest friend I've ever had. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm asking you today, I want you to ask yourself, do I have a relationship? Do I know anything about a relationship? Or am I just religious? Or do I just have religion? Saying all that, I need to say some more things. And thankfully, Brother Landon, thank God I have time. 
to save some more things. Somebody has said this years ago, and I jotted it down. Religion is man trying to find God. But salvation, on the other hand, is God finding man. Religion satisfies a man's mind, but salvation satisfies a man's soul. Religion puts on its best manners on Sunday and whenever people are around, but salvation tries to behave itself every day, everywhere, even when you're alone. Hallelujah. Religion is man working as hard as he can for God. Brother Ivester, religion is man working as hard as he can for God, but salvation is God working as hard as he can in man. Hallelujah goes right there. Do you feel him working? Do you feel him working? He which have begun a good work in you, a good work in you, will perform it. I feel him working every day. I'm saying to you, he's real. He's real. You need to know, you need to know, you need to know that you have a relationship and not just religion. Amen. Stay with me, all right? Religion will make a man do a lot of things he really doesn't want to do. But salvation will make a man do only what he wants to do because the desire to do it is in that man's heart. Listen to this. I love this one. This is one of my favorite ones right here. Religion will cause a person, listen now, religion will cause a person to be found in church every day if necessary, but salvation will cause the church to be found in you. Say amen. Hallelujah goes right there. Salvation will put a love in your heart, a love in your heart for the church and the people of God. Amen. Listen to this. A man works on his religion, but salvation works on the man. Religion will cause him to do good. Salvation causes him to be good. Religion will sometimes make a man look beautiful to others, but salvation will make him look beautiful to God. Religion is concerned with showing the fruit of the Spirit, while salvation is concerned with possessing the spirit of the fruit. And if you possess the spirit of the fruit, then you automatically will produce the fruit of the spirit. Religion depends on the sunshine of life, but salvation <laughs> makes its own sunshine. When the sunshine of life goes behind the clouds, religion drifts, but salvation it never notices the difference. Religion makes a man more pleased with himself than with God. But salvation makes a man pleased with God and never pleased with himself. I said never pleased with himself. Oh, yes. Religion allows a man to compare himself with others and then settle down in the cozy little nest of self-satisfaction. But salvation, on the other hand, makes a man compare himself to Jesus Christ, the model man. Then he settles down on a never-ending struggle of being conformed to the image of God's dear Son. Is everybody listening? Do you have religion or do you have a relationship? Is Jesus real or just a thought of your mind? Is he operating in your life? Is he operating in your life? Or are you only going through the motion of an outward religious observance? Everybody pray. Everybody pray. When religion comes, or with religion, the creature is the dominant entity. But with salvation, the creator is all in all. In religion, it's powered by the love of self. But salvation is powered by the love of God. Religion is characterized by spiritual death, but salvation is a spiritual birth. Religion is having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Watch this. But salvation is having the power of godliness and denying the form thereof. That's the difference. That's the difference. I like that one. You did too. 
I'm going to give it to you again. Religion is having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. But salvation is having the power of godliness and denying the form thereof. Amen. Amen. Religion will allow a person to feed the poor, starving millions of India, but possibly to hate his brother next door. But salvation will cause him to love everybody. And salvation will cause him to reach out to everybody in love because the love of Christ constrains that man. Religion will make, that, will make a man, listen to this, will make a rich man give away $1,000, which he didn't need anyway, and he can write it off as a tax deduction. But salvation will make a man give away his last $10 bill to someone in need with no hope of receiving any credit or receiving that money back again. That's salvation. Religion allows you to worry about how people are treating you. Religion allows you to worry about how people are treating you. But salvation, however, causes you to be concerned about how you're treating others. Say amen. I love that right there. Religion will make you concerned about how other people are treating you. But salvation, when it's real salvation, it'll make you concerned about how you treat others. Am I right about it? Yes, I'm right about it. I'm talking about a relationship. I'm talking about a relationship. Amen? And Jesus is the, is the instigator and the giver of that relationship. Religion will make you feel like you earn and deserve heaven, but salvation will make you know it's nothing but the gift of God. Religion, like, listen, let's let me slow down. Religion sometimes will make people sick of you. Religion sometimes, Brother Randy Jr., will make people sick of you. But salvation will make them sick of themselves. I like that. You, you'll get that after lunch. They'll make, you, they'll make you sick of yourself. Religion is what man, since time's beginning, has been trying to offer to God, trying to offer up to God. But salvation is what God, since time's beginning, has been trying to offer man. This then, ladies and gentlemen, is the chief difference between, between religion and between salvation. In your religion, you're trying to offer up to God something. In your religion, you're trying to offer up to God. But look at me, friend. In salvation, God offered something to you. And that is his son, Brother Caden. The Lord, and by the way, Miss Marissa, not only did he offer it, but thank God I'm glad I received him. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. Stay with me, okay? Stay with me. To get religion, to get religion, you have to give up certain things. Stay with me, okay? To get religion, you have to give up certain things. Depends on what religion you, you ascribe to. So you've got to give up certain things. But to get salvation, you just have to give up. You just have to give up. You just have to surrender. You have to submit. And can I say this? Everybody can talk a good religion. Everybody can talk a good religion. And, and I got some more notes up here. You know, Judaism, Mormonism, Catholicism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Protestantism, Russellism, that's Jehovah's Witness, Adventism, Methodism, that's the Methodist. Pentecostalism, Presbyterian, watch this, and baptism. You see, you just said Baptist? That's what I said. If all I am is a Baptist, Brother Kirby, if all I am is a Baptist, I'm going to die and go to hell. And if all you are is a Presbyterian, you're going to die and go to hell. And God love you if all you are is a Methodist, you're going to die and go to hell. And if all you are is a church member, you're going to die and go to hell. And if all you are is a person that's kept the Ten Commandments all your life, you're going to die and go to hell. 
That's religion. Right. You're trying to offer God something. You're trying to offer up to God something. Yeah. You missed it, friend. You missed it. 2,000 plus years ago, God offered you something. Yeah. His son, the Lord Jesus Christ, on an old rugged cross to shed his blood, to be buried, to resurrect. You've got to trust him. Come on, yeah. Tiffany. You've got to trust him. Yeah. You've got to take him. Yeah. You've got to accept him. Right. You have to accept him. Yes. Anybody have a $50 bill? Anybody got a 50 or a 100? Somebody's got a 50 or a 100? Can, can, I, can I borrow it a minute? Quickly, a 50 or a 100? Brother Jack, you got one of the two? Or either one? 50 or a 100? 20, it don't matter. What you got? Oh, hidden, that hidden money. I see it. I see it, that hidden money. Hidden, hiding that from Sammy and Gina. If this was mine... If this was mine, and I just decided, this, that's a brand new $50 bill. Caden, stand up. If this was mine, and I was going to give it to him, I'm going to give it to him. Yeah. It would never be his. It would never be his unless he right. yeah. accepts it. If it's over here all day, it's still not his. Now, I've got every intent to give it to him, but he's got to accept it. He has to receive it. He has to receive it. And could I tell you something? Get that back to him in a little bit. Get that back to him. In your religion, you're trying to offer God something. But in salvation... God's offering you something. Paul laid down his religion. Forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark. You know what else? I count all things but loss. He's talking about his religion. I count all things but loss. You got to lay your religion down. You got to lay that down. And I'm asking you one more time. Do you have a relationship? Do you have a relationship? Let's bow our head. I want us to pray. Everybody praying. Everybody praying. Please pray, church. Please pray. Is there anybody in this building this morning? Is there anybody in this building this morning? that would say to this preacher while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, and it's right at 12, it's early, so we have time to give an invitation. But is there anybody in this building this morning would say to this preacher, you know, I'm concerned, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that, you know, it's, it's possible. It's possible that, that I don't have a relationship. Preacher, it is possible that you definitely are talking to me. I do not have a relationship. I know a lot, and I know a lot about the Bible, and I know a lot about religion. But preacher, I don't believe I have a relationship. Would you lift your hand? Let me pray for you. Would you lift your hand? Anybody? Anybody like that at all in the balcony, on the lower level? Lift your hand when I see it. Take it right back down. Preacher, I'm not absolutely sure I have a relationship. Listen, friend, you better have a relationship when you leave this world. You can't get one when you leave this world. You got to have one now. Anybody, pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. I'm worried about myself. I'm concerned about myself. Lift your hand. Dear Heavenly Father, we did what you said to do, and I leave the message with you. And I leave the results with you. Lord Jesus, you know this congregation. You know the hearts. You know the lives. You know whether, whether you know, Lord, whether we've got religion or we've got a relationship. I'm glad we have Paul for an example. He left the religion. He, God, you gave him a relationship, a revelation of your son. Speak to hearts. Show sinners their need of a Savior. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. What number are we singing? 342.